What a fucking waste of time. <laughs> I actually started reading the inheritance games. I'm so happy. <laughs> A huge thank you to Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video. I absolutely love working with Book of the Month and it is because of companies like them that I can keep on creating content for you guys. If you didn't know already, Book of the Month is an online subscription which is absolutely perfect for readers like you and I because every single month they have like a curated selection of new releases, early releases, debut authors that you can choose from and for the best possible price. Book of the Month is a risk-free service so if you don't like any of the the picks that they have you can either just like skip a month or you can pick one of the books that they have featured in their past months or just a great title from their backlist and the price is just absolutely phenomenal because hardcover books are just extremely expensive but book of the month makes it affordable and if you use my code sabine you can get your first book of the month book for just nine dollars and 99 cents and an absolutely amazing thing is that they are currently also shipping to canada before they only shipped to the us now they're also doing canada unfortunately not to other international countries. As most of you guys know, I am Dutch, but they are sending these books to me because our collaborations have been quite successful until so far. But right now I will show you guys the two books that I picked for October. And honestly, they're really, really exciting new releases that I'm looking forward to reading very much. The first one is Foul Lady Fortune by Chloe Gong. This seems like an amazing spy novel. Foul Lady Fortune by Chloe Gong is the first imperative in this shadowy 1930s Shanghai tale of spy Spycraft and hijinks where death is ever near. And I also chose Spells for Forgetting by Adrienne Young. Beware of the spell that this idyllic island can cast. Everything is a bit more haunted than it appears. Seems like a perfect spooky book to me. <laughs> Thank you so much to Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video. Again, a link is in my description and use my code Sabine to get your first Book of the Month book for just $9.99. And now let's go on to my cozy fall reading vlog. was immediately they like overthrow you with all these assignments so am i gonna have a life no so hopefully this video will go up somewhere during the fall <laughs> let me finally give you my like midway point update so i am a little bit over halfway through the society for soulless girls by laura stephen let me tell you about the book because i haven't done that in this video yet so laura stephen has written my most favorite contemporary novel i think back in 2018 i think it came out i don't know if i would reread that today that it would still be my favorite and this is like her first ya a thriller paranormal murder mystery. Me and genres is not like a good match, okay? So basically we follow our two main characters, Ellis and Lottie, and they go to this private school, which is the elite Carville College of Arts. And 10 years ago at this private school, four students died. And after that, the school got closed down and no one really figured out what happened to them. Now the school is reopening and Lottie is determined to find out what happened to these students in the past. Alice, the other main character, is Lottie's roommate and she comes across a weird soul-splitting spell in the school library and then the North Tower, which I think is kind of like depicted on here, claims another victim during their like stay at the school. And Lottie and Alice are also basically like getting haunted or like a curse is being put on them. That's still kind of vague. So basically Alice and Lottie have to figure out what is going on, what is the truth before these centuries old curse consumes them both. That's what it says on the back. Let me tell you my opinion on the book so far. It is not that amazing. <laughs> I was really hoping to get that like mysterious dark academia vibes with just like weird ass things going on and like there are weird ass things going on but it truly feels to me as though 
Laura Steven, especially at the beginning of this book, was kind of like thinking, okay, what is typical for a dark academia story? Let me check all of the boxes. Check, 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 you know? It felt like really obvious in your face, trying to push the vibes on you instead of really making you feel the vibes, in my opinion. Plus I am on page 227 and basically the whole synopsis is where we are at right now. So still after 227 pages, still no answers have been found and it's just a whole lot of introduction. I feel like this could have been shortened so much. This book features a female female romance between Lottie and Alice. I feel like that's really quite obvious. So I don't think that's really a spoiler. The thing with their chemistry is that it's like a grumpy sunshine kind of thing. But Alice is like, so aggressive at the beginning of this book. I'm still quite like unsure whether that was her personality or if it's because like this curse that has been going on. And if it's not the curse, then honey, you need to go to therapy because you have some serious issues. <laughs> I wanna know more and hopefully I will find that out later in the book why Lottie is so obsessed with trying to find out why these four students in the past got killed because I feel like that's not really explained or like it seems a bit vague to be like so like randomly obsessed. I was like completely ready to DNF this book because it took so incredibly long and I was really frustrated but now it's grabbing my attention a little bit more so there might still be hope for this book. I'm hoping to finish it this weekend. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this book. What a fucking waste of time. <laughs> I have never skim read the last 200 pages of a book quicker than with this one. It's not worth any of your time. And I'm saying this with like such pain in my heart. I was definitely like really, really hoping that the second half of the book would kind of like make up for how crappy the first half was and it absolutely didn't. To give you my opinion without spoiling any of the story, which I barely feel like there is a plot, it's super, super repetitive. I'm gonna give you my quick overall thoughts. This book desperately wanted to be a dark academia read and it just, it does not deliver. I absolutely despised, I think, Alice at a certain point. At first I was kind of like giving her the benefit of the doubt because she is so, so, so angry. And that's kind of like a theme that this book is supposed to explore is like female anger and I just feel like it totally did not work out or just like it did not do that super super properly. Alice has done so many things in this book for which she could go into fucking prison and still our other main character Lottie she still swoons for her. I desperately wanted to ship this female female romance and I just no. There's like a slight hint towards one of the characters possibly thinking that she was asexual as well. So that's a little something that's super quickly like being discussed in this book. But the premise was a thousand times more impressive than the actual execution. And it has ruined my dark academia mood that I was in, which is sad. So I don't know which book I want to pick up next, but let's figure out. Ew, oh my gosh, that truly freaked me out. Oh. What's happening? Is this book like haunting me? Is it like telling me to shut the fuck up? Okay, we're back. That that really freaked me out. I think the battery's slowly dying. This is gonna be a two out of five stars for me. It was, it was crap. But I will come back to you all later with some possible next options that I will be reading. So a couple of days ago, I did this whole like try a chapter with me. <laughs> for Geekerella and Our Wives Under the Sea. I have two options for what I wanna read next and they are in two completely different vibes and I just don't know what I'm going for. I might pick them up both just because they are so, so different. But then <laughs> instead of picking one of those up, I actually started reading The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes and I'm here to tell y'all that I'm obsessed. <laughs> I am literally at page 200 right now and I forgot to just like give you a little update that, you know, by the way, I started reading this gem of a book. I'm sure you all know what this is about already, but let me tell you, even though you probably already know, it is about our main character, Avery. Her mom has passed away. Her father is not in her life and her half sister is taking care of her, but they are definitely like struggling financially until Avery gets a message from the Hawthorne family telling her that their grandfather, who was a freaking billionaire, I think he had like $42 billion. He basically left everything to Avery and the rest of his family barely got a scratch of what Avery received. But 
she didn't know the man. What's happening? <laughs> That's basically what everyone wants to know. Avery also has to live with Tobias Hawthorne, AKA the billionaire who kind of like gave Avery all of his money. She has to live with his family. She cannot trust anyone. They don't trust her. There are a ton of like riddles, secret allies and passages in this huge ass mansion. It is everything that I was wishing for and more. It has super short chapters, like four pages each on average, which makes me fly through the book. I don't know if it's only my brain that's working this way, but when a book has short chapters, I am much more eager to like keep on reading because I'm like, it's only four more pages. Let's read another chapter. And that just like goes on in like a full cycle. And then eventually I have actually like already read 50 pages, whereas if a book has longer chapters, which are like 20, 30 pages each. I'm like, damn, that's a whole freaking commitment. And I'm enjoying this like so, so much that I'm not only flying through it, I also just bought <laughs> the Hawthorne Legacy, which is the second book in the trilogy and the final Gambit, which is the third book literally just released this month. I think that this is gonna be the perfect mystery book for me. It's action packed. It has intriguing characters. Avery spends most of her time with the grandson of the person that she got like all this money from. And they are all so flawed. And like there's this bad boy, there's this like really strict boy. And usually I would hate these types of characters, but for some reason I'm not annoyed, which props to you, Jennifer Lynn Barnes, you're doing a good job. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's basically my update. I'm just gushing about this book and I want y'all to know that. <laughs> Dr. Martin's St. Clair. How do you say this in English? Dr. Martin's is how we say that in Dutch. And it's like soft leather and just like this huge plateau, which I love. I think that looks so cool. I am obsessed. I am so happy. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. Look at these. I mean, I'm, I am I'm already obsessed. Oh. So this is a green crown prince pumpkin. 
We're gonna do a little taste test. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Oh, don't touch it. <laughs> I was like, does she want to do that? Or does she think it's weird? <laughs> savory at first and then it becomes a bit more sweet. Mm -hmm. You understand that it's... Well, <laughs> <laughs> I understand that they say it has a nutty mm. taste. Mm -hmm. I like it. Mm -hmm. I like it. Mm -hmm. mm. And I like it the texture has a little bit of like the st stringy. Does that make any sense? Yeah, yeah I understand. I have it's never like tasted spaghetti squash but I feel like that's kind of the... Yeah, that's also a squash. Yeah. So it makes sense. Let's go on a museum trip with Leonie. Here we go. <laughs> Weet je dan wat de echte kleur is van die kleur? Oh. Fun fact with Leonie. Biology facts. Ja. Morning. You absolutely need a reading update because I have finished two books and I haven't talked about both of them. <laughs> okay, so the two books that I have finished in the meantime. Well, the first one I have talked about actually, and that is The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. And oh my gosh, I love this one so, so much. This was so much fun and exactly what I needed. It is a super fast paced story, not only because of the short chapters, but just like a ton of things happen, which will definitely keep your attention. So my final thoughts on this book, because I have told you guys the premise, I especially loved the middle part because I was so invested to find out like what the hell is going on between this billionaire and this like super random main character. <laughs> I don't really want to spoil anything, but I kind of figured out a little bit of the direction that this like mystery went into because of the title of one of the next books and just like a character that was being introduced to us in this story. So I mean like props to me for figuring that out, but this book still ends very with like an open ending and not really an answer to anything. The characters are just like messed up. Like this family is it's a shit show. <laughs> but the focus is mostly on like these four boys, AKA the grandchildren of the billionaire that passed away. And they're also really messed up and just super mysterious. Like you just don't know who to trust. So you're like really on this journey with Avery to try to find out what the hell's going on. So yeah, still no answers at the end of this book, which is kind of like unsatisfying, but also, you know, lots of potential for book two and super, super curious to start reading that one. We'll talk about the book that I'll be picking up soon in a little bit. But then in the meantime, I also read and finished Dark and Shallow Lies by Ginny Myers Sane. This wasn't on my autumnal TBR initially, but when I finished The Inheritance Games, I was like, I don't think I should pick up the Hawthorne Legacy immediately because sometimes if you have too much of a good thing, 
you know, I was kind of like scared of reading too much of a good thing and not being able to like fully appreciate it. But this one really spoke to me when I picked it up because look at the cover. It looks really, really dark and really creepy. Fits perfectly with like the spooky October vibes. In this book, we follow our main character, Gray. She's 17 years old and every single summer she spends her time at this like self-proclaimed psychic capital of the world, which is called La Cachette and it's like in a swamp. That sounded really cool and the whole setting is very, very spooky. But about like half a year ago, our main character's best friend, Alora, went missing and like people are still looking out for her and just like no one knows what happened. When Grey comes back this summer, she's like trying to find Alora. When Grey also meets this like stranger who just came into town, she knows that there's like much more going on with La Cachette and Alora's missing. Basically, everyone in this town is hiding something and you're slowly figuring out what is going on. And the thing is, I adored the first 100 pages of this book. It felt super atmospheric. That whole like swamp setting. I want to say psychedelic, but it's psychic town. It felt just so perfect. And the audiobook, I think, is done really, really amazing. You also have these little like chapter breakers thingies, but it's basically some sort of vision um, that's like going on. And the audiobook really like played into that and made it all sound super eerie and creepy. But this book, just like with the Society for Solos Girls, is like a classic case of if this book was 200 pages shorter, I would have like been able to give it a way, way higher rating because this took way too long. You slowly get fed little bits of information about this mystery and it's not like you kind of like naturally slowly find things out. It's just like, oh, info dump, here you know a new fact, info dump, here you know a new fact. And that is really a shame, I think. <laughs> it made me really enjoy this book less than I probably could have. Also the whole relationships between the summer children, basically these like 10 children were born at the swamp around like the same time on the same date and they have like a special psychic connection. I wanted to see more of this friend group and to really like see the depth of their relationships because they kept on telling us like, we've known each other for so long and we've like been through all this stuff and we love each other so much, but I did not see any of that. <laughs> Hence why I wasn't able to be fully invested in this story. And like halfway through, I was just like, when am I, you know, gonna get some actual substance in this story. There's kind of like this love triangle thing going on and I just was not here for both of the love interests. So that also didn't help. There was just a ton of potential with this book. The execution was just uh, not it for me, but this book does have like a four to five stars on Goodreads. So I think a lot of people do actually really enjoy the story. For me, it was just too slow. The characters just, I didn't care for any of them and I didn't really care for their relationships. Hence why I'm giving this book a two out of five stars. That was really a shame. Like my fall and autumn reading has been going like up and down. So yeah, I'm gonna go home. I need to pack a couple of my other things and I really should be leaving soon. <laughs> but I need to take like a book with me because what do I wanna read when I'm like on my train ride? I just don't know. So the thing with being a mood reader, I just, I don't know what I'm in the mood for right now, which is not very helpful when you wanna pick up a new book to read. So I think I'm gonna take with me in my dreams i hold a knife by ashley winstead very quick impression of this book six friends one college reunion one unsolved murder there's lots of secrets i've heard that this has like all of those dark academia vibes how many times can i say that in my videos during the fall we shall see take a shot every time i say that i think you'll be drunk or right now i do maybe want to pick up the hawthorne legacy aka book two in the inheritance games trilogy okay so guys thank you so much for spending time with me during this reading vlog i hope that you enjoyed it let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of the books that i showed you guys in today's video or just tell me the books that you have been reading this fall because i always love to know if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up you can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or in the button down below by the way what do you think of my new channel look my friend mirta from sunflower winter she created it for me i commissioned her and i am just like so absolutely pleased with the results someone is like looking out their window and i feel awkward <laughs> i i absolutely love this new channel look and i think it really fits with my new brand. That was a little side note. The other side note is definitely check out Book of the Month. My link is in the description. And again, use my code Sabine to get your first Book of the Month book for just $9.99. Right now, I'm gonna go home and read on the train and I will speak to you later. Bye.